Hello friends, so welcome to this new module, Efficient Market Hypothesis. Students, this particular concept is based on a theory given by this person named Fama. And on the basis of this concept, we have got one sum which is there in the practice manual. And I'm very sure many of you who must have seen that sum must have found it to be beyond you. It is appearing difficult to us. We don't know how to do it. There is so much of mathematics in it. Yes, students, you know what? I'll tell you something right now at the start of this particular module that yes, there is some intense level of maths here. Those mathematical formula students, we have no option but to take it, buy at it and apply it. But the financial logic of why we are doing what we are doing, that I will explain in detail to you in this video of EMH, that is Efficient Market Hypothesis. Okay, students, so can we start? Let me now for an example, take a random company called X Limited. Okay, so I'll take X Limited. Let us observe now the share price movements of this company in the last 10 days okay so what i will do is i will take day end prices of the last 10 days students these were the last 10 days share price movements of this company called x limited students do you understand that if i plot them on a graph okay if i plot them on a graph okay where the y axis is the share price and the x axis are the number of days do you realize as the number of days increases this price of the share is going gradually up correct students what do you think will happen in day 11 that has not yet happened is it rocket science is it rocket science to know what will happen on day 11 absolutely not just look at the trend every day it is moving up by five do you realize therefore on day 11 i am expecting i am expecting that on day 11 the price of the share will be 150 correct and this estimate i could do at the end of year 10 only the moment the price touched 145 because i have been seeing that this share has been consistently growing at rupees 5 per day correct so students with this we complete this small example of x limited which had been consistently growing at 5 rupees per day let's see another example now please pay attention y limited okay its last 10 day observations i will take of the share price these are the share prices students the graph i am drawing is not exactly accurate i'll be just drawing a rough graph here so please tolerate okay so this is the share price these are the number of days so let's say we started 100 year 110 120 130 140 135 115 110 131 142 151 160 165 171 and 162 correct students this is the growth in this particular company growth fall everything is there okay so this was which company students y limited yes let us go to the next company now yes i will be just showing some examples and then i will summarize everything please pay attention let me take z limited all right z limited students z limited 10 days observations i'll take okay these are the share prices over the last 10 days so let's plot them on a graph students share price and number of days correct so students see it was 100 110 105 115 92 98 93 120 107 119 this is how it has gone every day up down up down up down correct okay students now i will not give any further company and now let us try understanding what is the message behind these three examples can we start students as far as x limited is concerned tell me is there any difficulty to know when to purchase the share look at this graph and tell me is there any difficulty to know when to purchase the share no purchase it anytime because it is going up 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 and up correct so whether you can purchase it here or here or here or here doesn't make a difference you will still be earning profits only correct because the share price is not coming down only it is going up 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 and up students my question to you is tell me looking at the graph itself okay looking at the graph itself can i say it is evident to us what is going to happen correct so if we just look at this graph and decide when to buy this share 
do you understand such an analysis of a share is a very simplistic analysis no need to do any analysis of its accounts performance projects to come future estimates nothing straight away look at the graph and know that this share price is increasing purchase it today and it will go up sell it tomorrow correct this is x limited simplest of all just looking at the graph you understand when to put the money correct next i will show y limited students y limited tell me what is the nature of y limited y limited's nature is once it starts increasing it keeps increasing it doesn't stop and then comes one turn and once it starts going down it immediately again doesn't go up it will fall 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 and then again a turn now once a turn takes place it again doesn't come down it will go up 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 and then again a turn down students i am very sure you all understand this will not immediately turn up it will again go down 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 correct students tell me are the changes in directions very frequent or they are very less very less correct it happened once here once here and once here correct students tell me looking at such a company can you judge when to buy yes students we should buy immediately once the share price takes this turn from down 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 if it just turns upwards immediately buy it there buy it here you know why because now you know about this company once it turns upwards it doesn't stop it will go up 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 and up and when to sell the moment it turns one down yes sell it off because now you know it's not going to come up for some time now it is going to go down sell it off you know students you can then buy here and then sell here you will earn a profit tell me students such companies such companies means whose price movement changes once it changes stays for a long time then changes then stays for a long time students do you realize for such companies also you need not do any analysis straight away looking at the graph only you can identify whether this company is predictable or not and therefore you can easily judge when to buy the share buy the share when the share price has gone down enough and taken one turn towards up buy it sell the share when it has gone sufficiently up and then taken one turn down sell it off yes such a company also very predictable can be analyzed just by looking at the graph yes let's go to z limited yes can you see z limited up down up down up down up down and up students what do you think predictable or not predictable i am very sure many of you must be thinking oh it is not predictable no students you are wrong it is predictable every day it changes so alternate days it goes up alternate days it falls on one day if it has gone up next day confirm it is falling next day confirm it will rise next day confirm it will fall can you see this is also even though it appears to be messy it is still predictable can you see from 100 it goes up to 110 goes down to 105 goes up to 115 goes down to 92 goes up to 98 goes down to 93 goes up to 120 goes down to 107 goes up to 119 which means in this such types of company where every day it is fluctuating do you realize immediately buy when it goes down and immediately sell when it goes up correct buy when it goes down because you know now it is immediately going to go up buy it and when it goes up immediately sell because it is not going to again climb it will immediately come down students therefore in this type of a company z limited also graph is enough for us to know when to buy the share correct so now listen to me carefully such an analysis of share price movements okay such an analysis of share price movements to decide when to buy and when to sell okay when to buy and when to sell comma just by observing they are graphs okay just by observing their graphs is called as technical analysis okay 
is called as technical analysis. Technical analysis means what students do not even think about what the company's name is, who the board of directors is, what their past performances, profits, EPS, dividends per share, growth rates, retention ratios, return on equity, return on capital employed, future prospects, future cash flows, discounting rates, present value, nothing. Only look at the graph and look at the graph and identify when to buy. Such an analysis is called as technical analysis. Do you realize in such analysis, once you know when to buy and you buy, you will immediately be able to earn bonanza profits because the share is following this particular trend which you have seen in its past performance evident on the graph. Students, such a market where you can earn bonanza profits just by doing technical analysis is called as inefficient markets. What are they called as? Inefficient markets. Why inefficient? Because students can you see how easy it gets to make money here, correct? The more difficult it becomes to earn money, then we start saying that those markets are efficient. The easiest way of earning money in the market is by doing technical analysis and therefore, if the technical analysis is enough for earning money from a market, such a market will be called as an inefficient market. So, I will write down here a market where, okay, a market where technical analysis is enough to earn profits is called as is called as what in efficient markets okay inefficient markets so students i hope you understood the definition of inefficient markets inefficient markets are those markets where you can earn bonanza profit just by doing technical analysis that is the analysis of the graph, the curves of the share in its past performances. Okay? Now students what pharma says is, see please pay attention, he says that there are two types of markets, one is obviously inefficient markets and the other he names it as efficient markets. Okay? He names it as efficient markets. Students, inefficient markets, he has categorized them into three parts. Please pay attention. Weak form of efficiency, very simple, this is do not panic, I will explain everything. Weak form of efficiency, semi strong form of efficiency. And the last one students is strong form of efficiency, okay? strong form of efficiency. Students, let us try understanding what this is. See, inefficient market students are those markets where you simply do technical analysis and your job is done. You can earn bonanza of profits, correct? Now, let us try understanding what is weak form of efficiency. Students, weak form of efficiency is that market where technical analysis fails. You cannot do technical analysis here, but you can earn bonanza profits by doing analysis of the company's fundamentals. As I was discussing the various factors that are there in the company, EPS, earnings, profit, dividends, future estimates, etc., etc., growth rate, all that fundamental analysis of what the company actually is and what it is expected to be, that analysis of its accounts, financial statements, projections, etc., and then taking a call when to buy the share. That decision of when to buy the share by doing company's fundamental analysis and then thereby earning bonanza profits, students, is a sign that the market displaying weak form of efficiency. That means technical analysis does not work, 
fundamental analysis works it will give you bonanza profit if you sit down and analyze the company properly the way it is supposed to be analyzed and then take a call of when to enter the market and purchase that share and due to that perfect analysis you did you were able to earn bonanza profit that means you have been able to earn bonanza profit not by technical analysis but by fundamental analysis such a market where you can earn bonanza profit just by fundamental analysis is called as a weak form of efficiency students please understand that the moment technical analysis fails the market becomes efficient okay in that one form of efficiency is weak form let us now see semi strong form of market students semi strong form of market semi strong form of market is a market where obviously technical analysis fails you cannot do technical analysis and judge when to buy the share fundamental analysis also fails okay fundamental analysis also fails you cannot sit and do all the analysis of the company and understand when to buy the share no it is not possible by the time you buy the share the share price would have already gone up which means the only option we have to earn bonanza profit in a semi strong market is insider trading okay insider trading which means it is unethical but that is the only way you can earn bonanza profits in a semi strong market because insider trading means what students insider trading means there is a news in the company before that news goes out in the public and then when the public starts doing fundamental analysis of the company share based on that news a person if he comes to know about that news before it goes to the public he can take a call when to buy the share before the public can come to know when to buy the share such an event where a person because of his contacts with someone inside the company and that person inside the company trades inside information with this person and therefore this person is now able to decide before the entire world is able to decide when to buy the share and thereby earn bonanza profit such a profit therefore is said to be earned by insider trading and such a market where fundamental not technical analysis works but only insider trading can work is called as a semi strong form of efficiency okay and now the last point strong form of efficiency must be what students here neither the technical analysis works nor the fundamental analysis works nor insider trading works this means news in the company will be available to all one shot it is not that insider traders will get a benefit it is not that public will get a benefit no everyone will be given the knowledge at the same time the moment the company gets the knowledge the whole world will get the knowledge do you realize therefore all three models of earning bonanza profit will fail then the only option you have in strong form of efficiency is to depend on your luck correct that you have bought a share at the time when it was low and then you are able to actually stay on and wait for the share price to go up and then when you sold it you earn profit that's it there is no easy money in strong form of efficiency there is easy money in semi strong form of efficiency if you are an insider trader there is a lot of easy money in weak form of efficiency if you know how to do fundamental analysis and the easiest form of money is available in inefficient markets whereby you can just do technical analysis and earn lots of money yes so students with this we have understood what is the meaning of efficient markets and inefficient markets okay now going back students do you remember these three examples yes x limited y limited and z limited remember this great now i will tell you something here hi friends i hope you are enjoying the video If you wish to learn the entire SFM subject with me you can enroll for my SFM course the link for the same is given in the description below thank you very much happy studying continue watching the video see please pay attention now there is a concept which is helpful for you to solve that one sum which is there in our ICI book okay please pay attention number of times okay number of times the direction of share price changes number of times the direction of share price changes 
is called in the statistical language as runs okay it is called as what students it is called as runs students look at x limited how many runs are there can i say only one which means it has gone up but it has not come down so going up it started from here and it went up so going up one run we are catching it is not going down only correct so one run is only there what about y limited one run is here second run is here third run is here and fourth run is here correct here the number of runs are only four what about z limited 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 runs number of runs are 9 in 10 observations 9 runs students in 15 observations only 4 runs students in 10 observations only 1 run correct can i say that technical analysis is possible if the number of runs are either too low or too high please listen to this extremely carefully technical analysis just look at the graph and understand when to buy and on bonanza profits that technical analysis is possible if the number of runs are too low like your x limited or your y limited too low number of runs or even too high if the number of runs are too high then also we can do technical analysis because alternatively it is going up down up down up down up down i hope you are understanding therefore students i can say for a market to be considered inefficient the number of runs should be either i again repeat either too high or too low we can easily do technical analysis and on bonanza profit hence those markets will be called as inefficient markets correct students therefore do you realize that for please pay attention okay for markets to be considered efficient okay for markets to be considered efficient the number of runs should not be either too high or too low they should not be either too high or too low they should be average okay they should be average between too high and too low somewhere in between which makes that particular share unpredictable which means let's say it goes up 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 then when it goes down again goes up then goes down 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 then up down up down then up 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 you understand there is no predictability in this share this is somewhere in between too high and too low number of runs and that means it should be what it should be somewhere average not too high not too low ready students here now the mathematics will start students the question that will be asked to you in the exam is they will give you a market and they will give you some past observations of the market just as we saw right just as we saw for z limited past observations we saw for y limited few past observations we saw for x limited past observations like that only they will give you few observations and they will tell you please test whether the market is displaying exhibiting a weak form of efficiency students weak form of efficiency means they are asking you are the markets in the weak form of efficiency are the markets efficient markets okay because i hope you know efficient markets are all three correct students right now i'm asking you to completely ignore that word weak right now don't even think about it from your exam point of view simple i'm telling you they are asking you now whether the markets are efficient or not correct students for the markets to be efficient do you realize the number of runs the number of runs should be average 
द नंबर ऑफ रन शुड बी एवरेज टिल यर यू अंडरस्टूड ग्रेट नाउ हाउ टू कैलकुलेट दैट एवरेज आई विल टीच इट टू यू राइट नाउ राइट हेयर प्लीज फोकस ओके स्टूडेंट्स नाउ लेट्स ट्राई अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट इज स्टैटिस्टिक्स आस्किंग अस टू डू इट सेज नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशंस ओके नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशंस वेन यू सी पॉजिटिव चेंजेस विच मीन्स द प्राइस इज गोइंग अप 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 प्लस साइंस इफ यू सी नेम देम एज एन वन एंड नेगेटिव चेंजेस नेम देम एज एन टू ओके सो आई गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल सी लेट से द शेयर प्राइस वॉज हंड्रेड then it went to 110 then it went to 120 then it went to 130 then it came down to 90 80 70 again went up to 95 and 105 for example students come on tell me from 100 to 110 there is a plus sign 110 to 120 plus sign 120 to 130 plus sign 130 to 90 negative 90 to 80 negative 80 to 70 negative 70 to 95 positive 95 to 105 positive students tell me how many plus signs can you see 1 2 3 4 5 we say n1 number of plus signs is 5 okay your n1 is 5 what about n2 number of negative changes can you see 1 2 and 3 yes 1 Two and three. These ones are the negative. These are the three negatives that you see. Therefore, the number of times it is minus n two will be three. Till here you understood. Now, students, look at this and tell me how many number of runs. Runs means number of times the price changed. Students, can you see from hundred to hundred and ten? It went the first price change upwards. This is your run number one, correct? Then it continued running plus 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 only. Then suddenly the run changed here, correct? This is your run number two. Then it goes down, down, down. There is no change. That is the same run going on. And then again it changes here. This is your run number three. So students, we say that your R is. Three. There are three runs here. Yes. I'll again repeat. From hundred, the moment it started climbing, that is your first change. Okay. So that becomes your run number one. Then it is climbing, climbing, climbing till it touches one thirty. That is the same run. Then the run changes. There is a drop from one thirty. It goes to ninety. Negative drop. Correct. That is your second run now. But that run will again continue because it is continuing dropping ninety, eighty, seventy. and then the run again changes again there is a price change that becomes your third run correct and that 95 105 the run is continuing therefore there are three runs here okay so basically there is n1 there is n2 and there are three runs okay students now going back to the theory students you see this for markets to be considered efficient the number of runs should not be either too high or too low they should be average can i say students i now need to know whether these three runs that i have calculated whether it is average or not if it is above average or below average we will consider the markets to be inefficient if the average is also 3 we will consider the market to be efficient okay students now some maths let's start now as far as average is concerned students what statistics says is it gives you x bar but instead of x bar that is the mean they use a more complicated term of a mean which is called as mu okay and the formula for mu students i've kept it in front of you here the formula of mu is 2 n1 n2 that is 2 into n1 into n2 divided by n1 plus n2 the whole plus 1 okay students if we solve this particular formula we will get the average correct we will get the average now students let's say we get some mu that is the average we have to compare that average with what with the runs correct these runs have to be average right otherwise it is inefficient but students now what we do is we are not so strict with the number of runs here we say average is not one number average can be a range of numbers which means let's say your mu has come to 4 okay your mu has come to 4 which means average runs should be 4 you have got how many runs 3 students is 3 below average yes if it is below average what will we say that the number of runs are below average therefore this market will be considered to be inefficient correct because for the market to be efficient the number of runs have to be average but then i am telling you do you realize you are being too harsh you are taking only one number as the average what a rare 
chance that the R will exactly be equal to the average. Therefore, students to be more practical, what we do is we do not take average as one single number, we call average as a range of numbers. Okay, Within that range, if the number of runs fall, then we will say that that particular number of runs will be considered average and therefore, the markets will be considered efficient. If the number of runs fall beyond the limits, beyond the range, then we will call the market to be inefficient, correct? Students, now how to calculate the range? Students, do you remember I had taught you something about range when I explained to you sigma? You remember that x bar plus sigma and x bar minus sigma becomes the range, correct? If my x bar, let us say my x bar is 4 and sigma is let us say 3. So, I say 4 plus 3 is 7, 4 minus 3 is 1, the range is 1 and 7. Remember that? Because if the center of all observations is 4, that is x bar. Sigma means there is movement, deviations possible from that 4 x bar. The sigma students is 3. That means this x can go 3 above 4 or 3 below 4. Therefore, the range is 1 and 7, yes. Similarly, students, this mu is like x bar, it is the mean. Do you realize that my upper limit, my upper limit students will be mu plus sigma into something I will tell later and the lower limit obviously will be mu minus sigma into something I will tell later. I hope you understand, right? x bar plus sigma is the upper limit, x bar minus sigma is the lower limit. Similarly, mu plus sigma is the upper limit, mu minus sigma is the lower limit and therefore, students, we need to now know after we have learned the formula of mu, we now need to know the formula of sigma. Students, the formula of sigma we, I have shown here, you can check it out here. Under root 2 n 1 n 2 bracket 2 n 1 n 2 minus n 1 minus n 2 the whole upon n 1 plus n 2 the whole square into n 1 plus n 2 minus 1. Yes, students, this is your formula for calculating sigma. And once we have got the sigma, students, n 1 n 2 I hope you know, right? Number of plus signs and number of minus signs. Students, once we have got sigma, once we have got mu, then upper limit is mu plus sigma into t lower limit is mu minus sigma into t. Students, this t now is nothing but the value of t distribution. Okay, It is the value of t distribution. Students, you must have not studied this any time in your past and therefore, I will just tell you one thing, do not worry about the t. The value of the t will be given to you in the question. Okay, Just understand one thing that they will give you two values of t at 5 percent level of significance and at 10 percent level of significance. So, what you have to do is start at 5 percent level of significance and find the upper limit, lower limit and see whether the number of runs are falling within the range. Then calculate at 10 percent level of significance, calculate the upper limit, lower limit at 10 percent level of significance, see whether the number of runs fall in the limit at 10 percent level of significance, yes. And then with that we end the question. Students, please understand one thing very important. Do you realize that the t for 5 percent level of significance and t for 10 percent level of significance will be different, hence the calculations of both will be different. So, we will have to do in parts. If it is 5 percent level of significance, then what is the range? What is upper limit, lower limit? And if it is 10 percent level of significance, what is upper limit and lower limit? And in that, if this number of runs fall, then students, we will say that the market is displaying weak form of efficiency. If the number of runs fall beyond the range, we will say that the markets are inefficient. Okay? So, students, I hope you understood that there will be t here. Okay, students, now your mu anyways is 4 for example and let us say your sigma is 1 and the t value given to us is 0 0.6. Okay? So, students, what will I get? 4 plus 0 0.6 is 4.6, 4 minus 0 0.6 is 3.4 and let us say this 0 0.6, 0 0.6 is at 5 percent level of significance, okay, 5 percent level of significance. Students, at 5 percent level of significance, the range we got is 3.4 to 4.6, but our number of runs are only 3, which is beyond the lower limit also. We will say that at 5 percent level of significance, students, this market is displaying inefficiency, correct? And students, let us say 10 percent level of significance, let us say the t 
is 0 0.5 okay the t is 0 0.5 so what i will now do is this is 0 0.5 0 0.5 this will be 4.5 this will be 3.5 students earlier my range was 3.4 to 4.6 now my range is 3.5 to 4.5 can you see as the level of significance increases more importance is given to the range to be closer, well knit and very accurate. Therefore, can you see the range has reduced to 3.5 to 4.5. Of course, at 5 percent level of significance, if this market was inefficient, do you realize at 10 percent level of significance also the market will 100 percent be inefficient. 3 will of course lie beyond, below 3.5 also. Yes, students. So, therefore, with this I explain to you how to solve in the exam this efficient market hypothesis runs test. This is also called as runs test because you are testing the number of runs, understanding whether it is falling in average or not and thereby understanding whether or not the markets are efficient. Yes, now one last thing students please pay attention. So, I will take 5 percent level of significance. Do you realize they will give you one T value for 5 percent LOS? For 10 percent LOS also they will give you some T value. But students if the question wants to trick you, they can give you 2, 2 T values under 1 LOS itself and they will say for example, X degrees of freedom and Y degrees of freedom. This X and Y obviously will have a number. Students, so which one to pick up if I want to do, if I want to do the runs test at 5 percent LOS, which degree of freedom should I pick up X or Y? Students, please pay attention, degree of freedom, okay, degree of freedom is always equal to N1 plus N2 minus 1, okay, N1 plus N2 minus 1, which means basically total Ns minus 1. Okay. So, students in this particular case, can you see my total number of n's were 8 that is 5 plus 3. Therefore, my degree of freedom here will be 5 plus 3 minus 1 that is 7 degree of freedom. Yes. And therefore, if amongst x and y, the one which is 7, one of them has to be right students. Let us say this one was 7 and this one was 9, we will reject this and take this t as the relevant t for our calculations. And of course, same goes for this 10 percent LOS also. We will reject this T at 9 degree of freedom and we will go for the 7 degree of freedom, correct? Students, one small logic I can give you for the degree of freedom, why it is minus 1. Listen to me carefully. See, let us say in a class there are 100 students, okay? In a class there are 100 students. I want to know what will be their average marks, okay? I want to know what will be their average marks. You know what I do? I create a sample of let us say 30 students. I do sampling. I create a sample of how many students? 30 students and find their actual marks and calculate the average. So, on the basis of the sample's average, I get average marks as 60 students, then what do I proclaim? I proclaim to the world that based on the sample, my average marks of 100 students is 60 per student, right? But the moment you use the sample average on the entire bulk of the data, there is something that is happening which I want you to understand. See, students, please pay attention. There is 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 99 and 100 students, right? Now, do you realize that when I say that the average marks of everyone is 60, do you realize the total marks I am proclaiming is 100 students into 60 marks per student, that is 6000 marks, correct? 6000 marks is the total marks of all 100. But students, let us say I now plot actual marks of each student. I plot actual marks of each student and I reach 99th student. I reach 99th student and I take total of 99 students marks and let us say I reach 5980. I have reached 5980 marks as the total marks of 99 students, correct? Students, for this average to hold true on the whole class, total marks of the whole class has to be 6000. For the total marks of the whole class to be 6000, do you realize this last student, his marks should be 20 because that is 6000 minus 5980 is 20. But students, is it necessary?
that the last student will exactly get 20? No. But still, we straight away stick to our sample average of 60 for the whole class, which means I am assuming that this last student will get 20, which means this last loses his degree of freedom. He loses his degree of freedom in the overall picture. Yes. So, therefore, if you see this 20 was not his actual marks. This 20 was the marks which was stuck onto him to make the sample average correct. Right. So, therefore, in case of sampling, tell me how many free observations are there. Can I say the free observations are 100 minus 1 that is 99 always in fact whenever you take sample average and apply it to the whole the number of free observations will be n minus 1. Therefore, students here can you see the degree of freedom is total n minus 1 yes total n minus 1. So, students with this I now stop my explanations to this particular concept of efficient market hypothesis. I hope you understood what is the concept and what is the method to solve it. And after that, we will then attack the sum which is there in the next video. Students, in that sum, I will not go into much of explanations. Straight away, I will pick up the numbers and solve the question. Okay? Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Hello friends, let us now start question number 86. This question students picked up from old PM security valuation. It had come in November 2008 for 6 marks, since then never asked, but it is there in the new study material also. Okay? So students, let us proceed and quickly complete this sum. Let us start. The closing value of Sensex for the month of October 2007 is given below. And then they have given you various values, yes. And then they are saying, you are required to test the weak form of efficient market hypothesis by applying the runs test at 5 percent and 10 percent level of significance. Following value can be used. Now, can you see 18 percent degree of freedom, 5 percent LOS that is level of significance, 10 percent LOS, the T values are given. 20 percent degrees of freedom again at 5 and 10 level of significance the t values are given right okay so we have to decide which group do we want to go for that of course depends on what is my degree of freedom and i hope you remember it is n1 plus n2 minus 1 so let's start students tell me what is the first thing you will do okay this is which question number question number 86 so i'll write down here question 86 now students First things first, we will have to calculate the number of runs. Okay? We will have to calculate number of runs and then we will have to check whether those number of runs fall within that range. Now students, that range, I will just draw it here. Center is mu, this is lower limit, this is upper limit. This students obviously is mu minus sigma t and this is mu plus sigma t. Okay, so, students, let us now start calculating the number of runs. After the number of runs are calculated, we will then go on to find the mu for which we will need n1, n2. Then we will find the sigma, then we will find the upper limit, lower limit and to find the upper limit, lower limit, we will need the t values, correct? And then we will decide whether the number of runs signify that the market is efficient or not. Can we start? So, number of runs that is number of price changes. Do you remember? Number of runs are nothing but the number of price changes. So, students first of all, let us see what is happening. Students, let us start. 2800 is the base value. From there, it has gone down to 2780. So, I will write minus up to 2795 plus up to 2830 plus down to 2760 minus up to 2790 plus up to 2880 plus up to 2960 plus up to 2990 plus up to 3200 plus up to 3300 plus up to 3450 plus down to 3360 minus down to 3290 minus up to 3360 plus down to 3340 minus down to 3290 minus down to 3240 minus 
down to 3140 minus up to 3260 plus and with that we end. Let us see how many times the price has changed. Can we start? Let us start. Can you see first price change was here? This becomes your R1, correct? From 2800, the drop is 2780. It dropped, it again went up, correct? So, therefore, this is your second price change. This is R2. Then it again went up. This is not a change in R. Then it came down. This is your R3, the third price change. It came down, again went up. Again, next price change. This is your R4. Then students plus, 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 plus goes on and on. No change in sign till here. This becomes your R5. Then minus, minus, no sign change, but then here there is a sign change. This becomes your R6. Then again it goes up and it comes down immediately. So, this is your next price change that is R7. And then it continues to be minus, 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 minus till it becomes plus again that is R8. So, therefore, students here your number of times price changed is 8 and therefore, I will say the number of runs are 8. Okay, students. So, now we have got our number of runs to be 8, correct? To be 8. Next, we now need to know whether this 8 number of runs fall in this range or not. For that, the first thing to be found is mu. Students, I hope you remember the formula of mu. 2 n 1 n 2 upon n 1 plus n 2 plus 1, correct? Students, for the mu formula, I will need n 1 and n 2. Let us check. n 1 is the number of plus signs. So, can we see number of plus signs are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Yes, your n1 is 11. So, I will write down here n1 is 11. Let us check for n2 also. Students, number of minus signs, okay, minus signs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Number of minus signs are 8. So, I will write down your N2 is 8. Yes. So, students, your N1 is 11, N2 is 8. Let us find the mu. Can I say it will be 2 into 11 into 8 divided by 11 plus 8, the whole plus 1. Let us take the calces now, students. So, it is 2 into 11 into 8 divided by 11 plus 8 students is 19, the whole plus 1, my mu comes to 10.26. So, I will write down here 10.26 becomes my mu. So, students, I have got my mu as 10.26. Yes, let us now calculate sigma because sigma is required for lower limits and upper limits, correct? Let us now calculate sigma students. My sigma formula is 2 n 1 n 2 into 2 n 1 n 2 minus n 1 minus n 2 the whole upon n 1 plus n 2 the whole square into n 1 plus n 2 minus 1. Can we put the number students? Please pay attention. 2 into 11 into 8 bracket 2 into 11 into 8 minus 11 minus 8 the whole divided by 11 plus 8 the whole square into 11 plus 8 minus 1, correct? So, let us now calculate them. Students, 2 into 11 into 8 gives me 176. So, it is 176 into 2 into 11 into 8 minus 11 minus 8, that is 157 divided by 19 square, that is 361, 11 plus 8 the whole square, 361 into 11 plus 8 minus 1, that is 19 minus 1, that is 18. Okay? I can solve this on the calcium straight away. 176 into 157 divided by 361 into 18. Yes, what we get is 4.25 and when we root it, we get 2.06. So, I will now get my sigma as 2.06, which I will write down here sigma is 2.06. Yes, so we have got the mu, we have got the sigma. Let us find the upper and lower limit. Students, before we do that, we will need the degree of freedom. Yes, 
degree of freedom students is n 1 plus n 2 minus 1, 11 plus 8 minus 1 that is 18. Therefore, students here we are not even going to look at the 20 degrees of freedom, we will only look at 18 degrees of freedom right. Let us start. Calculation of upper limit and lower limit at first students we will do at 5 percent level of significance. So, I will write down here at 5 percent level of significance. Okay? So, the upper limit formula you all know it is mu plus sigma into t. Students what is the mu you got? Mu is 10.26 sigma is 2.06. So, I will write down here 10.26 plus 2.06 into t. Students at 5 percent level of significance, 18 percent degree of freedom, the t is 2.101. So, I will write down here 2.101. So, on the calcis please 2.06 into 2.101 plus 10.26 will give me 14.59 and the lower limit students is mu minus sigma into t which is equal to 10.26 minus 2.06 into 2.101. If we take the calcis 2.06 into 2.101 m minus 10.26 m plus MRC will give me 5.93. Yes? the upper limit is 14.59, lower limit is 5.93. So, students I will just draw here 5.93 and 14.59 correct. This is the range. If your number of runs fall within this range, it will be considered as proper average and therefore, we will say that the market is efficient. Students what were our number of runs? Our number of runs were 8. Is 8 falling within this range? Yes. Therefore, at 5 percent level of significance, we will proclaim that this market is displaying a weak form of efficiency. Hence, it is an efficient market. Okay, so, I have put both formulas in front of you. What is the mu students? 10.26 plus sigma students if you remember 2.06 into t. Here also mu will be 10.26 minus 2.06 into t. Students the value of t at 10 percent level of significance yes is 1.734. So, I will write down here 1.734, 1.734. Let us take the calcis 2.06 into 1.734 plus 10.26 we get 13.83. 13.83 now is the upper limit as far as the lower limit is concerned 10.26 m plus 2.06 into 1.734 m minus MRC I get 6.69. 6.69 rounded off as the lower limit correct. So, now the range here is 6.69 and 13.83. Can you see students as the level of significance increased the range has shrinked. Earlier at 5 percent the range was 5.93 and 14.59 at 10 percent it has now shrinked to 6.69 and 13.83, but students my number of runs 8 is still within the range. Therefore, at 10 percent level of significance also this market is displaying a weak form of efficiency because 8 lies in the acceptable norms of being average according to this concept. Yes. So, students with this we finally finish this question, question number 86. I hope you understood this question. I will now flash the solution on your screens. You can copy it in your notebooks. Thank you so much.